Hey guys, welcome to another quickie. That was very quick. My name is Vito and in this quickie, we're going to reuse the previous quickie and I'm going to show you how to achieve a totally different look by just doing a few modifications. Now, opening a wine bottle can be more complicated. Trust me. Okay, now this, what you see here, is what we've created in our previous quickie. And as you might have seen already on Facebook, this is what I've created. Just by modifying a few things. Now, if you take a look, man, this thing is like 3D-ish and forget about Photoshop, like painting all those layers and, and uh, masking things and, and whatsoever. We are gonna do this in a much, much cooler way. So let me go back to this composition here and I'm gonna show you a few tricks that you can uh, use to achieve like different shadings and different looks. Now there's a lot of information in here so be aware and uh, make sure you watch it like a uh, hundred times. As you have seen before, we took our input image which is this cool effect achieved by a lens flare or a hotspot node and uh, we created a bump out of it just to get this uh, different shadings and this sort of 3D look. Then we use the color space to change the, the color space and uh, apply the filter on it to get some other cool stuff and we merged it on top of uh, the image and then we merged the other thing on top of it and then we had this look here. Now to achieve that chrome look we need a different approach. Now you can take advantage of the uh, awesome texture node. Let me just drop it in. What is the texture node? The texture node lets you actually retexture your rendered object. Now it's basically like a relighting just with textures. For that to work, you need the UV pass. Now the UV pass basically looks like this or should look somehow like this. Now this UVs here, I just applied a box mapping. That's why it's like really messed up here. You don't have to care about that. So, but uh, yeah, this is a, a um, UV pass rendered in V-Ray. And in order to use a UV pass, you need to embed the UVs into the UV channel. Now to do that, you should already know we use the Boolean tool. We go over to the aux channels, check enable, and under UV texture. This one has only two slots because um, it's like X and Y, so you don't have a Z. In the U texture, you want to choose red. And in the V texture, you use green. And basically, you have now already successfully shifted your UV pass into the corresponding channels. And now, you can hook it into the texture background slot. And all you need now is a texture. I'm going to use the texture I used before. Let me just grab a copy. So, hook the texture into the foreground slot. And now when I view it, you can see that um, we have retextured our object. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we have applied, I don't know if you understood. I mean, watch closely. We applied a texture to a 2D image. Okay. And now look at this. I mean, you can offset the texture and you can scale it. Just like in your 3D application. You can flip it. You can rotate it. You can swap the UVs. Now... What happens on the outside, you don't have to care because there's an alpha and if we apply an alpha multiply, oops, there goes Camtasia, thank you. So I think Camtasia just made my Vacom tablet tablet crash. Ah, seriously? Is it so hard to make a screen recording software? <laughs> yeah, and now we basically uh, multiplied the alpha so it's gone. And yeah, you can now use retexturing. Now, one important thing about the uh, retexturing, this texture node, unfortunately, doesn't come with a filter. So as you can see here, it has like uh, all those jagged edges and, and it's not usable like this. For that to work, you need to have like double resolution or even more. And then after that, you would basically just uh, resize it down. In this case, let's make it uh, half. And as you can see now, because our resize node has a filter, we get a much nicer look, okay? And we're going to use this to our advantage, even though we don't have UV coordinates, we're going to use it to achieve a certain look or different kind of looks. 
Okay, so let's do it. Now, the first thing I did is I went to the color space and I changed it to a different color type, something like this. Then I basically used the same technique, hook the color space in here to shift the UVs into the channels. And then I got this. Now, these are not really UV coordinates. That's why the texture tool doesn't really know what is going on here. So uh, you get this weird result. It's like every pixel has different UV coordinates. But we don't have to care because what we do is we reduce the scale. We go bring it all the way back. And then we just hit control and raise it a little bit up. Now, very important, use the normalize button and bang okay now you can adjust it so it, it has some nicer look just try to find a nice position you can offset it okay uh, another thing you might want to do is to remove the colors here actually we don't need a color so just go in here and press b until it uh, turns to black same here okay and now we'll go back to our texture node and maybe we'll find something more interesting. Just try to find a nice tone and nice shapes and whatever you like. And then I pan the color correction. And let's set the colors to something like this. Bring down the... Ah. Yeah, I forgot to turn on. Uh, this is very careful. If you turn on the normalize button, I always forget to turn it off. And then I, I'm, I'm wondering why nothing changes when I move sliders. So make sure you turn it off again. And so what we have to do now is because you see it's, it's like it's very dark. Okay, but it has all the information we need in there. So we just use a color correction to crank the details up. And uh, apply some contrast to it and crank the gain up like this. Something like this, and maybe less red. Well, it's all up to you. I mean, you can just go nuts with this and do whatever you feel like. Let's crank this up to eight. Yeah, cool. I mean, look at this. I mean, we didn't do anything with layers or we didn't mask anything and we get some sort of 3D-ish chrome or metal or whatever. And uh, it's just kick ass. I mean, seriously. Now, okay. Now let's do the resize thing because at the moment we have uh, full HD and we're going to scale this up here. Let's uh, multiply it by two, this one as well. And don't forget the lens flare background. Okay, cool. Now that we have this huge image, we can go in and resize it back to full HD. And we'll get our anti-aliasing. Ah, oh, I mean, look at this. Me as a half Italian, I would say, Mamma mia, guarda, guarda. Time to open the wine bottle. Nah, not yet. Okay, so basically that's the main thing. Now you can go in and do all the things that you have learned and modify it until it looks like you want it to look. And uh, yeah, so basically what I did after that is... Let's just connect it to the, to the tree that we already have. So the color space goes into the filter still, and this one goes into the color correction. Now here, remember we have the edge detection. Okay, and now use the color correction to brighten up the edges a little bit, something like this. And here we had an overlay, which we might not need. However, it looks somehow nice. Maybe just slightly. And then I did the displays thing. Then I clipped the blacks and the whites. And here we did the relighting thing. And this kind of gives it some natural look, if you know what I mean. And look at this. I mean, we did nothing. We didn't mask anything. I mean, of course, we used the mask here, but we didn't have to do like a, a lot of things now to get this result. I mean, imagine you have to do this in Photoshop or After Effects. I mean, uh, yeah, let me stop here. Okay, so let's go on. And here we have our circles. And look at this. I mean, this is non-destructive. It still works. I mean, I didn't touch anything here. It still 
kicks ass. I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. Okay, and uh, yeah. So here we apply some glow. And here comes the fancy stuff. But actually here I branched out. I deleted everything that is here. And I've went to the Chrome look. If I switch to the Chrome composition. So where is it? So I went to up to here. Uh, yeah, then I crop the background and I color correct or added a gradient and uh, added some bevel here. And then I applied the the text and I recolored it and applied a glow. Nothing, seriously, nothing special. This is just so basic. And what I did here is I've created highlights. So the highlight tool in its default state, it comes with the merge over. But that gives you not enough control, so I'd like to separate it in a different uh, branch, so I can uh, use, for example, I can use a brightness contrast in front of it to control how much uh, stars I would get. For example, by this gain control, I can apply more or less stars. And I do this because the highlight itself also has controls, but I find they don't work so nicely. It's like a big fiddling around until you get uh, something and I don't know, it's just weird somehow. So I'd like to use a brightness contrast in front of it. Then I, you can color it. And here I have a fuse that uh, Stefan Iringer made, which I will provide you soon. Stefan allowed me to include his fuse into the Confusion collection. Just be a little bit more patient and I will provide you this fuse. And what I did with this fuse is actually to give it some chromatic aberration fake thing. Yeah, so these uh, highlights look a little bit more natural. And then I applied it on top of it. Okay. So you don't have to stop there. I mean, the, the possibilities are so endless. I mean, you can, it's crazy. It doesn't matter what you change everywhere. You can change anything and it would totally give you a different look or a variation. And uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to show you some of it. For example, this one. This is also created using the same method. Look at this texture here. This is all very procedural. There's nothing like masked by hand or whatever. And I can show you what you can achieve just by changing a few things. Now, in this in this composition, what I did after the color space, I created a gradient map, which basically has like uh, the red and the green, which is used in the UV pass. And I overlaid it on top of my color space. And I, this will get me this. Now, if I go to the texture tool now, you can see what happens. We've created our fake UVs. And as soon as I change like from square to cross or radial or angle or reflect, whatever, let's say, let's try radial. I mean, now you can go into the texture and you can do different variations here, different scales, whatever. And then the same thing again, color corrections, overlays, displays. And then the relighting thing to give it a more natural look. I mean, look at this. I mean, what this relighting does, I mean, this looks so much more natural, right? If I can say that. You can create so many cool textures with, with this technique. I mean, Fusion is an awesome texture generator. Okay, and we continue. Just the same thing. Nothing changes here. This is all the same. Glow. And here are the highlights again. So here we have too many highlights. So let's just reduce the gain. Not that much. Well, maybe just a, like Bob Ross would say, some happy little highlights. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here I want to point out that I use the alpha divide and an alpha multiply. The default ones that come with Fusion. And why I used them here and not the boolean tool or whatever is because now if I turn them off now here we have an alpha right so if I would do color correction you can see that I will affect also the background or the alpha which I don't want now in this case 
I just I can just apply an alpha divide and after the color correction an alpha multiply. So here, whatever I do here, it leaves the alpha untouched basically. This color correction leaves our alpha untouched basically. And then we kind of bring the alpha back and this is what happens. Okay, so I mean, I could go on for hours and create many different textures and variations of this. It's so much fun, right? And it's just, it's just so awesome because there's so many like Bob Ross would say, happy accidents, happy accidents. I mean, this is really like happy accidents. <laughs> I mean, because you just click something, you just variate some something and you get a totally different result. And it's just so much fun. I mean, I, I really want you to, to play around with it. And you're going to learn a lot from this, especially like uh, if you have to create some um, some some textures or yeah whatever you will learn a lot from these tools and these tools are tools that you will use even if you do VFX like professional VFX you know like CG integration or whatsoever you will always find yourself using some of these tools again and again and again and again and that's why I say play around be joyful with this stuff and yeah enjoy all this Okay, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this one as well. And again, don't forget to like me on Facebook. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing.